Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, please go and leave a five-star review. For example, this lovely review from Lose Rocky 874 When I listen to Chrissy talk about her deconversion from woke leftism in early adulthood, I get a hard on. Listening to her podcast makes me feel like I'm listening to the Virgin Mary discuss politics. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Rocky. <clears throat> Lose Rocky. I appreciate all the reviews so, 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 so much. You know what I also appreciate? Taking balls with no hair on them. I'm very excited to let you all know this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. They are the best in the in waist trimming, in below the waist trimming. I mean, I guess you could trim your waist too if you have a hairy stomach. They're the best in below the waist trimming with precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Based here in the US, but they just opened up a a branch over in the UK. So now my British friends can get in on that too. I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys, but um, you'll like nick yourself while you're shaving and then you'll have sex and it burns and it's uncomfortable. Well, I'm here to help you with that problem. I had Frank try the new lawnmower from Manscaped and it worked really well for him. It made his junk look bigger. Uh, I would recommend it to anyone that I would get physical with. Uh, in fact, they also have a really great product called the Weed Whacker, which is good for ear and nose hair. I'm totally giving that to my dad for Christmas. Uh, the lawnmower battery works up to 90 minutes. It comes with a great recharging station. It's legit, waterproof, cutting edge ceramic blade, and it will reduce any awkward grooming accidents. If you're a dude, give this a try. Go to manscaped.com and use the code CMP for 20%, 20 off. I almost said <clears throat> pull cent. 20% off plus free shipping. Ladies, you already know what I'm going to say. Get this for your man. The holidays are coming up. If you're with a guy who doesn't like to spend money on himself, this is the perfect gift and it'll make him look amazing down there. Go to manscaped.com, use the promo code CMP, get 20% off plus free shipping. You know what else is good? <clears throat> Cushy Dreams. <laughs> I didn't have a segue there. Cushy Dreams offer, offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. They specialize in extraordinary CBD hemp rich flower, AKA bud in cans or in pre-roll CBD joints. Um, I really love uh, their product. I struggle with anxiety uh, every single day, <laughs> definitely in this lockdown BS. And I find that um, smoking CBD really helps me to calm down. Like I've done like a CBD dropper before and it's like, I thought I felt it and maybe I didn't, but for sure with Cushy Dreams, um, I instantly like, within 10 minutes or so, my body feels calmed down. My mind feels calmed down and not in like a sleepy way. I'm like focused and it's all without getting high. Um, you get all the health benefits of CBD without getting high. There's under 0.3% THC. It's cannabis. It ships to you directly, legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Looks and feels like high quality marijuana, but it's not. It's just the CBD. They, these guys are obsessed with quality. They're constantly doing lab tests. Everything is hundred percent hand trimmed. They take the artisan approach. Everything is in a small batch grown here in the USA, which I think is the best part. Um, they have different strains of specific indica and sativa blends like energy, hustle, relax, and dream. I really, I've tried the hustle one and I've tried, I think the create one I really liked. Go to cushydreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y, and get your high-quality CBD bud. Use the promo code CMP to get 20% off every order plus free shipping. All right. I'm so excited to have this guy back. He's already a, fr a favorite, a friend of the show. Right. Guys, um, you might be a fan of his podcast. You might be just now hearing about it. Uh, I'm excited to have this guy back to talk about more comedy shenanigans. It's Carl, and he's the host of Who Are These Podcasts. What is happening, Chrissy what Mayer? Up. So glad to be back. <laughs> so glad to have you back. Yeah, we were you were you were just apologizing to me, and I wanted to make sure I recorded it so that I could listen <laughs> well, to the it apology later. Is over. The apology is over now. Damn it! That's enough. <laughs> I did fuck up our timing, and I'm the one who asked for two o'clock, <laughs> and then I was out, and there was not 
available to do two o'clock. My apologies. It's okay. It's okay. Very professional of me to do. But that. now, look, I didn't even brush my hair. I just braided it and threw it back. It's one of those days. It's. Just I at least did my hair for your show, Chris. It looks good. Did you get a haircut? Uh, no, I need one, but thank you. That, that's the kind of equipment I have to making sure Chrissy Mayer show is going to be excellent. You got to look good for this Zoom. Right. Yeah. Well, especially because I know that our buddy Mike David is watching and wants who's, to keep on Mike, us. Who's Mike David? Is that, um, uh, who is that? See Red Bar, he's making fun of us. The Red Bar guy. No, I haven't. I stopped watching. I just, I always seem to find something I'd rather do than watch his show. <laughs> Me too. I, just, I was so disappointed. So he started watching us and he played a little clip of me talking about the lighting in your room or something like that. He's like, these people are so fucking boring. Why would they talk about this shit? It's like, Mike, right before that part, we were goofing on you. Yeah. We're not finding the part of the show that's actually interesting. And by the way, I, I brought this this time. Yes. Percy Mayer and Carl from Who Are These Podcasts? They're <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so boring idiots. <laughs> I should get my own sound. So anyway, I did my hair for you and also for Mike. I okay, want to good. Hi, Mike. I'm sure you'll watch this. I, I, I hope one day that you won't and that you'll have something better to do. But, you know, times are tough. Him, him and I have a very similar lifestyle, I have a feeling. Because, oh, really? Yeah, because what we have to do is we have to listen to and watch people on the internet all day and then clip it and talk about it on our show. Oh, so right. It's totally very right. similar. It's like, if anyone's talking about me, I have to go find it and then talk about it. So. That's yeah, it. I actually sent um, Gino and Aaron. Well, I sent it to Aaron thinking he would play it like for fun uh, to them today. It was actually a, a voicemail from your last episode where a guy called in and he was like trying to explain why everybody on Reddit doesn't like Gino. And, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. And they're like, well, he, you know, he says he's funny, but he didn't try to make this current audience laugh and then he just played every single time he said the f-bomb yeah a lot of f-slurs coming out of bag Gina. bomb so. it was just like bag it, bag it, bag it, bag it. it was really funny and so i was like you should play this on in hot water so i don't know if they did that today or if they're saving it well i also sent gino because he asked for it so we listened to this show reply guys and uh it's your friend kate willett yes i was just on your show with gino and we were yeah. What Carl does is, yeah, he reviews other podcasts uh, and tells people if they're worth listening to or, or not. And usually it's, it's more fun when they're bad. Right. So yeah. we put together a super cut of them saying the word abortion, which was <laughs> at least 32 times on this one podcast, they used the word abortion. So I said that to Gino because I think he wanted to use that on In Hot Water as well. He had a good bit for that. It would make a great ringtone as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my mouth's I on me. I too was surprised to hear just how frequently uh, two women in their mid to late thirties are talking about abortion. I was like, yeah, hopefully, you know, those not in a fun way either. Like yeah. when I talk about abortion with my friends, there's a lot of laughter. It's, it's a good time or a joke. Yeah. These women not happy about it at all. Very concerned about human rights and women's rights and all that kind of fun stuff. I right. guess. I mean, for me, it's like, I know my best abortion years are behind me. So I'm just right. trying to look ahead <laughs> right. on the future. Um, gosh. So then I almost don't even know where to begin. So we were doing this, me and Gina were doing your show. Yeah. Uh, and it was so happy. It was, I was so happy to be there to, cause we, you know, me and Gino kind of have like a long history with Kate. She's tried to like cancel both of us. And um, I don't know what she's doing now. I should ask you, have you heard anything? Have you gotten any backlash from this? No, I have not. I have I'm not. I'm surprised by that. They love being victims. I, um, I think that a few, they do love being victims because it's fun because you don't need um, to prove anything. You just have to say that you're a victim and then you get attention. It works out really well. Attention and all the people who want to maybe sleep with you will come on and say, oh, poor you. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to gauge how many dudes are waiting in the wings wanting to sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit the button. It's like the bear that like hits the button and gets a treat. Yes. Um, I think that's what being a victim is all about. And uh, and so then, and I thought that was going to be the whole show, but you, you surprised us with a wonderful surprise. And it was this woman, Heather, who used to used to be like, I guess a patron of Stuttering John. She started out as a fan of Stuttering John's, mm -hmm. and then became a like a, a financial supporter of his, of of his. Uh, I guess a 
a patron of the arts. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Still- so Heather reached out to me right before, like the week before the show that we did and said, I've been supporting Suttering John. I've been trying to help him out. I'm a huge fan of his, but he's gone too far and I have to expose the truth. I want to come on your show. I was like, yes. Awesome. Because it just so happens that there's a connection with you and Heather because after you made the dabbling comment, John asked Heather to troll you. In fact, it's so sad. It's so sad. Like people troll. I understand. But for a grown man to ask another, like a grown woman to go and troll someone else, like. But it wasn't just her. Other people have told me that he's asked them to troll people on his behalf as well. So he's trying to get this army out there to troll people. And Heather felt bad about that because she did troll you mm-hmm. <laughs> and I told her I said hey, I got Chrissy Mayer on the show this week she's like oh good I want to apologize to her she was very excited about apologizing to you for trolling for trolling you when John asked her to yeah so, yeah so it worked out really well that she came on the show and we did a whole interview you me Gino Heather and then we had to take it off the show yeah and I was like she you know she's like oh I want to apologize to you Chrissy I'm like what I'm like for trolling and that's the thing is like there's just so many trolls I it's it's hard for me to remember any one individual troll and I just was I couldn't recall like anything she'd ever said it's like I usually just ignore it if someone's really a pain in the ass I'll block them but like I think she was someone maybe I didn't block and I just I couldn't remember anything that she had trolled me on so I was like oh okay no, never mind it's all good who cares like right. water under the bridge and then she started just freely talking about stuttering John and she yeah she it was interesting she was going into detail about like uh, that she, the money that she was gi- you know giving him like she, first of all it wasn't even enough he would then he would ask her for more money and he said that it was for he was putting it towards his child support which is like what a sad thing to reveal to a fan, you know, that, that you rely on their money, uh, like not just to support your arts, but to pay for your kids. I have a text message that she forwarded me. This is a screenshot from her text with stuttering John saying, Hey, Heather, this is back on October 15th. Hey, Heather, are you going to PayPal me the money today? I only asked because I have to pay my mortgage. They called (gasps) me yesterday. What? I have, I have the screen grab of stuttering John saying this to Heather. And the reason why I feel like this is important to go out and tell people is because Suttering John is such a raging asshole to everyone that he deserves to be exposed. Our show, who are these podcasts, is not about exposing people. We don't go that deep. I don't get personal with people. But Stuttering John totally deserves it because he's trying to weaponize people who follow him. He tries to take advantage of people. He tries to take advantage of Heather in every way possible. And so I just, I think it's really funny that this has all come out. How much is his mortgage? And, and also how, how much was, she, was Heather giving to Stuttering John every, every, what, every month? Well, it's interesting because she was buying him equipment also, like his green screen that he has that covers up oh all the cockroaches. God. She bought him that. So she's a, sh- it's a sugar mama mom. situation. Yeah, it's like, which is so sad. He's supposed to be the famous one. He's supposed to be the one that's doing well. He's supposed to be the everyone's like, wow. I he can't has two believe- pensions. He worked in television for 10 years. I don't know how he's this broke. It doesn't make, maybe he can't tap into his pensions yet. I don't get it. Wow. But I, I do know how much money Heather has given John, but I'm not going to say that because Heather doesn't want me saying. If I guess it, will you blink? <laughs> I do blink a lot. Um, $200 a month? Oh. Blink once if it's less, twice if it's more. More, okay 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 is it 500 it a month? doesn't matter it, it's too way too much money to be given a guy like stuttering john who i mean yeah already i was gonna say the 200 is over oh my god i mean but it's interesting though because yeah. i was under the impression that john is talking to a room full of trolls whenever he's doing his show because the show is so bad but like, there's no way people are watching this this is what he does on the balcony it's like his live from the balcony and like yeah, he just has like balcony. beers going mm-hmm but I didn't realize that he has tapped into something. There are these people with Trump derangement syndrome. And if you do a show where you say Trump is Hitler, they will listen to your every word. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say that some more. Say that some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump is Hitler. Right, right. Keep saying that. It's and like so he, bait. It's like bait in a trap. It's like he, he actually has a following of idiots who go on to watch him talk about how terrible of a person Trump is, which I'm worried for John come January 20th. I, I don't know what he's going to talk about anymore. It's going to be Right, tough. right. If, if Trump is somehow manages to take it back, 
then then he'll have something to talk about. But if yeah, if he doesn't and Biden is the next president, then yeah, he'll he'll have to form a new personality. <laughs> he'll have to form a personality. A personality. And that you know what it is? It's like people with Trump de- derangement syndrome, like they love, they love meeting another person that has that because they don't have to think for themselves. They don't have to like they don't have to put things together. They just like get to hear the same talking points that they've already, you know, logged as truth. And it's very easy listening. Did and you know that Trump killed 230,000 Americans, Chrissy? I had I didn't know that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, why don't we just, why don't we just throw on like people who've been in car accidents as well? People who've been right? suicide. It's all Trump Trump's fault. fault. For sure. Why not? Oh, it's it's so shit. funny. I, I did enjoy that. And I'm rehashing this again, but when, you interviewed John and he didn't just agree with all of his nonsense. He was taken aback. He's like, well, people think other things than what I think. Like, yes, most people. And and I didn't really realize how, how anti-Trump he was. Like, I really was just trying to, I know that a lot of people want to hear about his time really years ago. I mean, no one's interested in anything he's done in the last 15 years. No, it's really all like from his time on On the Howard Stern show, because the whole thing that the tonight show was a big deal. It wasn't, nobody liked the Jay Leno show. I mean, Jay Leno's great, but that show sucks. <laughs> yeah. like, I want to know what it's like to be in the writer's room of Jay Leno. Like, no, I mean, you didn't write for The Simpsons. You're writing for Jay Leno. It's the hackiest jokes late uh, show for the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. So I just was like, let's talk about the stuff that people care, like know you for. Your, right. your time on Stern. And, and then it really became really obvious like just how much he hates trump and i was like i'm not gonna pretend i'm not gonna pretend that i hate him also i'm not just to like just to get along with you on my podcast like first of all it's not what we're here to talk about yet he was the one that was like oh is it all gonna be about trump uh and it's crazy so i just was like oh this guy is fucking insane everything gino biscondi like love or hate gino everything he said about stuttering john was 100 percent true and uh, I was like, wow, now I understand like why he inspires so, so much hate. Um, but it's interesting because like, I'm confused at, so Heather reached out to you. It almost seemed like she wanted to make a truce. It almost sounded like she was gonna, in a sense, break off or break yeah. up from Stuttering John because they, I guess, had been flirting. There had been talk of him coming out to visit her. I think she maybe she lives in Texas or something. She lives like out of state, she lives far away. And I'm thinking like, does then Heather have to also play for, pay for his plane ticket? Like what, what sure. part of, you know what I mean? Like she's just Lord. paying for stuttering John to be in her life, which is so sad because there's so many good looking guys out there. The word blow job was thrown around, I believe a few times. And that's <sighs> the thing. Typically, if, you know, a guy's going to go somewhere to get a blow job, they're the ones paying the way. Isn't the blow job the payment on the other end? I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, I also have low self-esteem, so I can understand Heather getting like caught up and thinking this is a great idea and like feeling validated from him. But like, oh, you really just got to pop the bubble and realize like, like, well, she did. So then she goes on the show and she says what she says and it's all fucking great. And I can't wait to put it out. And I have the whole show ready to go with you and Gino and Heather and I edited it and I'm ready to upload it. In fact, I had uploaded it to Libsyn. I was ready to hit publish and she's like, frantically texting me so i call her up carl you cannot post this john's threatening me he's gonna get my father involved he's gonna play these recordings of us having phone conversations on his show on tuesday and i'm gonna lose all my inheritance and all this she's like freaking out so i I, why does he have recordings of their phone calls does he though i doubt it john is a desperate cornered animal he's just gonna say whatever he's gonna say right because he knows how to manipulate this woman Yes. And once again, it worked because, you know, part of this obviously is on Heather. Heather comes on the show, does this interview, and then has to tell John's moderator, Sean, that she did it. So then Sean tells John, and then John gets all freaked out, and then he tells Sean to tell Heather. Why did she tell Sean? Isn't she allowed to just live her own life and not, like, check in with anybody? She needs a lot of attention. It's It's so bizarre because none of this needed to happen. So then... I'm hit with this dilemma. I have this awesome piece of audio that she's telling me to take out of the show. I'm like, I really don't want to do that. And then- Like, what was she saying? Like, what did she have the problem with specifically? Well, she just said that if John hears this, he's going to release all of these phone conversations that 
her and John had to her dad, who's 82 years old, lives in Naples, Florida. Don't even know why this matters. That's where my dad lives. I wonder if they live in the same like complex are you also rich chrissy Mayer? no no <laughs> see i it's i'm kind of annoyed at my parents for this because like we grew up like kind of poor like yeah. just a lot of you know you off that vibe uh, by the way i believe that really thank you because <laughs> <laughs> i like that's how you, anybody anytime you meet someone who's like a hoarder you know that they like kind of grew up a little bit poor or at least grew up definitely not with money and yeah. like people think oh you're from long island you're from rifle center it's like like, no, like my grandparents like helped my parents pay for the house that we all grew up in. And then um, my mom, it was, it was like growing up, my dad was a landscaper. He was the last of the, of the great white landscapers of our time before they became mostly Mexican. So he was like really holding it down. <laughs> my mom didn't have a job. She didn't go to work till I was in first grade. We had like no health insurance growing up. It was just like, you know, yeah, whatever it is what it is i wasn't like going hungry but we definitely like didn't have money and then my dad got so lucky he had a truck driving license from driving his um landscaping truck around and he so he had this license he was able and he's not even a sociable guy like he got so lucky and one of his friends hooked him up with a teamster job mm. so then he's in the teamster union and they're work you know they'll work like 16 hour days getting crazy overtime and like was started doing really well and that's what allowed the three of us kids to go to college and um but then he just like banked that all and then like my mom died so i'm she so he's got like all of her pension now too he's in naples florida tearing around in an audi he, he won't even tell me like if my mom left any of us money like he's so sketchy about it so uh, at least yeah. though giving you money so that you could donate it to stuttering john no <laughs> that's very important yeah that's what every dad hopes to do they hope to be able to retire with enough money that they can then give their daughter money they can give to shitheads on the internet who are begging for it that's what's kind of great about not at all being financially supported by their parents because then they then they don't get to dictate your life which is uh, kind of the yeah, best it seems, it seems like heather works for many masters at this point it seems so she's, she's 56 years old i don't know if i'm supposed to say that 56 years old, and here she is scared that her dad's going to find out she did something. Like, what, what are you doing? How are you living wow. your life like this? Does she have a, not have a job? Does I think she, she work? Oh, we're, not, we're not besties. Okay. But, but I got to tell right. you, my relationship with Heather W. has been on this roller coaster. I've had more ups and downs with her in the last week and a half than I have with my wife. We've known each other for 12 years, and oh. I'm not exaggerating. I've had more ups and downs with Heather. She's threatened to get my show taken off of the internet, have me fired from my job. What? She's, yeah, she's really freaked out at me. And I, I'm not one who takes threats real lightly. I'm not a fan of that. So, no, no, I don't enjoy threats either. Which is why I've, I've just kind of been like, fuck her. I'm just going to say everything that she told me and, and read all the different- uh, Yeah, fuck it. She because started. at the same time, like when you were just thinking like, oh, I think it was maybe right before you put it out, and yeah, like we were talking, I was like, well, you don't owe anything to her. Like I've done podcast episodes where like the guest, normally a friend of mine is like, oh God, can we not put that out? Can we cut this part out? Like, ugh. and like, they haven't even said anything bad. It's just like, I get people to open up, they open up. And then a day later or a couple of days later, they're like, oh God, can you? and I'm like, and I just say no, because they're not working on my podcast. They're not paying my bills. Like you willingly do a podcast you know what I mean? Like nobody's, nobody was forcing Heather to say those things. I, I was torn because I'm like, I don't owe this woman anything. She came on my show and willingly did this interview that she knew was being recorded and she wanted to do it. But I did feel a little bit bad. I don't know if John has any power over her. I assume that he doesn't, but mm -hmm. she perceives that he does. So I did feel bad that I was essentially going to ruin this woman's life or whatever the fuck was going to happen. But not so, bad that I on your show. not so bad that I didn't put it out on Patreon. <laughs> so you can't hear the entire conversation. I said it to you, Chrissy, but Ooh. you can hear the entire conversation that we had, as well as me reading a bunch of the DMs and things like that, because that's why she sent them to me, to expose John. And too bad that John got upset about it, but that was kind of the whole point in the first place. It almost sounds like she, and I know because I've been in abusive relationships, it almost sounds like she's trying to get out. Like she's reaching out for help, like to someone like you. She's like, here are these messages. She wants to talk about it. And then he like, he, you know, put, has his meat hooks in and then he sort of like, tr you know, pulls her back in to his bullshit, to his manipulation. 
That's what it wow. sounds like to me too, Chrissy. And uh, I ended up in the middle of it for a second. And I was like, all right, I'm out of this. I'm no longer responding to her messages or phone wow. calls. I'm like, don't, don't drag me into your guys' fucking weird three-way. I want nothing to do with this shit. Like the nerve of stuttering John getting upset with somebody who's financially supporting him. It's like, you know what? Like, then don't accept her money. Then you can, you know what I mean? Ugh, it's just, I, I've, I lost like, all respect for him uh, you had respect for him you i were. had i it was you know it was dwindling <laughs> yeah. i was down at like two percent you know i was like at a phone about to die i was like you know whatever he's able to coast off what he did 20 years ago yeah. good for him but that's the opposite of respect able to coast off what he did 20 years ago <laughs> so, I, I do want to say one of the things that set heather off i haven't talked about this yet on any shows or anything so Ooh. she was she was messaging with John while John was doing one of his beer on the balcony shows. And he was talking to Monique from Radio Gunk. Do you know who Monique is? Mm, no. Okay. Monique does this show called Radio Gunk. It mostly just rips on Howard Stern. And it comes, it's a, a forum, radiogunk.com is a forum on the internet. And it's a bunch of like radio fans, mostly Howard Stern fans. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Radio Gunk actually. Yeah, it's a pretty it. big forum. So Monique has done John's show quite a bit. And Heather is messaging John and I have, I saw it happen live when it happened. He was getting all freaked out and like yelling at Heather while he was on the show Whoa. to Monique. But now I actually have the text messages. So this is Heather. Oh, I should do my Heather impression so that you know. Oh yes, talking. please. <laughs> Heather. John, John, I need you to call me after your show. Maybe like 215 ish PST. Kind of urgent. I'm live. I can't get the link. What the fuck? Nikki didn't send it either. I'm live. Stop. Fuck you. Yeah. You fucked up my show. You should apologize. But again, it's all about you. Oh, that's it. Gloves are off. You are too dumb to know that the place to watch your Stuttering John podcast is not the same like as beer on the balcony. I did not fuck up your show. Go ahead and say it one more time, you ungrateful piece of shit. Man, you are angry. Are you on your meds? Swing it up, miss, asshole. I did not, uh, I did too mess up this show by your text. Take responsibility for your actions. So this is what's so funny about this. And wow, I'm, it almost sounds like your Heather impression sounds so much like Caitlyn Jenner. It's uncanny. Like you could. It's a little Rich Boss. It's a little Caitlyn Jenner. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of inspiration. Caitlyn there. Jenner with a lisp, yeah. So uh, what's funny about this is that John like really freaked out at her because she was texting him and calling him while he was doing the show. It never once occurred to John that he could put his phone on silent or even turn it off. It ne ne never occurred to him. This is him. You fucked up my show. Why were you texting me while I was on a show? It's like, you're, you're just drinking a beer on the balcony and talking to Monique from Radio Gun. Hey, oh, man. A show. There's, there's 27 people watching. Who gives a shit? And was he doing he, it from his phone or the computer? Oh, no, he was doing it from his computer. He was oh, yeah. Then phone. just put your phone away. Put your fucking phone away. It's not that wow. difficult. I love these people who don't understand the concept of, yeah, but I have to have my phone on all the fucking time. Actually, you don't. I, yeah, I, you don't have to respond to people right away. That's what we forget. You might actually come off as someone who has something going on in their life if you don't respond to everybody all the fucking time right away. So anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. They just, sound kind of like a quarreling couple. They sound like, this sounds like such a like toxic relationship because she's like cursing him out. Like he curses her out. They're very, they're very comfortable, you know. So here's being another, rude to here's each another other. fun exchange that she sent me. This is with this hockey Canada Sean guy, who's his moderator. How many yeah, moderators she, does he have? He has a lot of moderators. What do the moderators do? They block trolls. There's constant trolling going on, so he needs a oh, lot of God. people on there to take comments down. So anyway, Sean is talking to Heather, and he says. Um, John was saying you told people not to super chat him anymore. Okay, so according to Sean, John was saying that Heather's telling people not to give him money through super chats. Hmm. So he says he won't unblock or talk to you until you donate for the camera he needs now that you told people not to donate via super what? chat. You are the cause. Said he cannot believe you did that to him live during the show. <laughs> So, wow. I don't know if this is real or perceived. She's saying that she never told anyone not to give him super chats, which makes sense because she gives him tons of super chats. But oh I love that this is the manipulation that's going on. John Crazy John, manipulation. She better fucking buy me my camera now. I'm pissed at her. She doesn't buy me this camera that I need. 
And then did she do it? I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, man. See, it's, it's hard to have any sympathy for her. I, wow. It's tough. I know. They're, they're, they're both kind of wackadoos. Uh, there's another text from August 3rd where he just sends a note. Where is this alleged donation? Question mark. <laughs> wow. What a dick. He's such a dick. <laughs> Yeah, then he threatens that he tapes other phone calls. And this is going back to September 1st. Why would uh, he tape their phone calls? Maybe he feels like he said it once and he's like, well, this is what works to manipulate this lady and get yeah. her to keep sending me money. Right, because he keeps threatening he's going to send the phone calls to her dad. So he's obviously figured out what makes this woman tick and, and yeah. how to manipulate her. And that's they must be dirty phone calls, right? Because if they're mundane that's not going to make your dad any feel feel any type of way so they must be like ugh that would be my sex dad. with stuttering john i think it was some sex i think it was drunk sexting which by the way who would be more embarrassed by that stuttering john or this woman i would think stuttering <sighs> john would be i can't I imagine what their weird. phone calls was sounding like look uh i went down on you uh you know i did your show i took my pants off hey, uh, i retweeted you uh, give me a kiss and watch out for the nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a kiss. Uh, don't mind the roaches. Uh, <laughs> so they came with the place. Yuck. Yuck. So then I had another guy reach out to me and I'm, I'm still communicating with him, but he looks like he's defected from John. He said that he used to be one of his moderators and he sent me a note through Patreon. He says, uh, also John sent me the same troll Mitch Fatel DM. He also asked me to troll Jason Ellis after Ellis went off on John and Sam Tripoli and Adam F. Goldberg when they were on a Twitter skirmish, when they were in a Twitter skirmish. Uh, I just ignored it. So this is wow. what John is doing. Wow, a lot of people. Well, the, the Mitch Fatel thing is from your show. Which yeah, I think funny. that's even sadder to learn that like he was, he was telling people to troll me and telling people to troll Mitch Fatel. And, and then he also goes and says like, oh, nobody's talking about Mitch. It's like, you are talking about him and you're creating everything. You're, you're sending the trolls out. You're, you're keeping it going. Also, the funny thing is, I think I talked about this on WATP this past weekend, but the funny thing is, is he told Heather, you got to go troll Mitch Fatel for me because he's talking shit about me and my parents. Now, what Mitch said on your show was that nobody thought John was going to be successful in show business, not even John or his parents. That's not trashing anyone. That's not talking shit. That's that sounds like a, an observation. Like That's an observation. They went to NYU together. They were friends. And this is just an observation that Mitch had, which is probably pretty spot on. I'm guessing nobody thought something John was going to be a success in life. Yeah, that's not a crazy thing to say. It's like you surpass everyone's expectations. Like, oh my gosh, if, if somebody said, I bet Carol's parents never thought he would have a successful podcast, I wouldn't take that as them trashing me. No, I would be like, yeah. Like, ultimately, that's a net positive. That's, right. uh, that's yeah. not talking shit. Oh, uh, it's so funny. I, I just, I don't understand the motivation that, what do you think you're going to get from that? Like starting beef on Twitter and trying to get people to start beef with people on Twitter. What's that going to get you? Maybe he thinks that that, maybe everything in his mind is like, what would Howard Stern do? And he's just, he's working with a lot of old information. And maybe he maybe. thinks like, this is the way to stay relevant. I got to tell people to troll other people unless they agree with me. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I used to listen to Howard Stern. I don't think Howard Stern ever told people to go after the people that he was in a feud with. I think people just did because I think he would. Them. Wouldn't he tell people to have multiple Twitter accounts that way? Oh, Howard Stern did, yeah. You can make it seem like I don't know, you have fans. That wasn't, that wasn't for trolling, that was to get good guests on. Okay, he was like, I need everybody to create Twitter accounts and tweet at Lady Gaga and tell her she's got to come on Howard Stern. <laughs> Oh, wow. All I right. Mean, it worked. You got Lady Gaga on the show. So. It worked. It worked. Yeah. I don't know. I, at the end of the day, I, like, I feel bad for stuttering John. Like I pity him. And uh... I don't. I don't at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's good right. Enough. You know what? It's like, and then I remember all the, you know, he's threatening me with lawsuits. And then I'm like, all right. That's. A little oh, bit. That, that's the other thing. I was just looking at my text messages right before we came on, and I forgot about this. So John was all concerned about what was going to come out in that interview, and so the one that's on Patreon. 
The one that's on Patreon, yeah. That actually, Sciency played the entire thing on his show. Ooh, Science! <laughs> yeah, he's he's on the cutting edge. <laughs> Fucking guy. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? That's my that's my uh, paywalled content. <laughs> so wait, yeah. <laughs> he took he's a member of your Patreon, and then he just paid. He just played it on his show. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's bold. Right. That's bold Science. Oh, here's some. Here's again from uh, Sean. John said he will go to the police and your parents and will show everyone the gun pics and all your chats. So apparently there was a picture because Heather felt threatened by this guy, Sale D, who's one of John's goons or something. I don't know. A moderator or a goon? <laughs> no, this guy's just a, a weirdo. So she felt threatened. So she owns a legal firearm, took a picture of her holding it and sent it to them. I, I'm pretty sure that's legal. <laughs> I think you could just have a gun. That's fine. Tons of people have pictures with their guns. Yes, correct. Anyway, I, I, I believe your boss has a few. I think I've seen a couple. Uh, oh, yeah. Anthony Cumia, <laughs> a couple of firearms. Uh, all right. So this is this was the latest that I got. And this is, again, John talking, to, or Sean talking on behalf of John to Heather. Uh, he's, he said, depending on what he hears, he'll choose if he's going to sue both of you or just y- Heather. Or no, or just me, talking about me. Um, so apparently he was going to file a lawsuit based on this interview that I did with Heather. How is that even possible? That's on Patreon. Like, didn't he have to sign up for your Patreon just to hear it then? Well, Nikki B did, which is another one of those moderators. I saw her come in and sign up for it. Hmm. But it's just funny to me because one of the reasons why I put it on Patreon is I thought if I put it out there, it could go viral. I'll just lose all control of it and everyone will know what happened. If I put it on Patreon, John will not want to bring any type of um, attention to it because why would he? If he doesn't want people to hear it, it's already behind a paywall. Just don't say anything. So I thought that would kind of save him. I guess he kind of came around on that because he hasn't he's, – he's gone out and, like, done vague threats about what people are doing, talking about me and Heather, but he hasn't said specifically. They're so vague. They're so vague that he won't even explain what's going on. So he's doing his fans a disservice. Like if, if he has new fans or, or people that missed all that drama, it's like, oh, I don't believe what people say about me. They're lying about me. And he doesn't say what yes, or who. You heard that. We played that on the show this past weekend. Don't believe what people are saying about me. They're lying about me. Like that is so generic. I, now I totally it's believe too, what everybody's yeah, saying about it's you. It's too generic. <laughs> Especially when there's screen captures. Like, I'm just reading DMs and text threads with this guy. It's not, we're not making up lies about him. So this is now, like, the second time he's threatening to sue you. First time he's, he's threatening to sue Heather. Yep. You know how you can get out of me suing you? It's just give me more money. <laughs> right. Send me $1,000 this month. Yeah, I, I don't know that this, I'm going to make my income from ridiculous lawsuits thing is going to work out for him. I have a feeling it's that really not. sucks, man. Like I fucking hate bullies. Like it's, um, I don't know. And people who bully women, like it, it gets me really angry. All right, I no longer feel bad for him. He, Good. He makes Good. me angry. Just come around. <laughs> so did Stuttering John also threaten to do bodily harm to Heather, <laughs> or did I mishear that? So <clears throat> this is this one's tough because she's getting threats from this guy Sale D, and. I have not seen a connection to John and Sale D. She claims, and she sent this to me, that because John follows Sale D on Twitter, that therefore he's in cahoots with this guy. And she's like, how could you follow him? He's threatening me. He hacks up my phone. He's hacked your phone. He has my address now. I think that there's some psychosis or not psychosis. I, I think there might be a little bit of schizophrenia or something. Psychosis. Like synopsis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the synopsis. It's a synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I, I don't know that John's threatening any physical harm to Heather. I don't think that's true. I haven't seen that. She might think that's, that's what's going on, but I, I haven't seen any of that. Wow. So it's only a matter of time before there is a former fans of Stuttering John support group formed. <laughs> I know. They can come yeah. over here to WATP. We'll help them sure. out. Yeah. For subreddit, it's mostly bashing Suttering John at this point. It's it's like, you know, I don't know if you've ever considered, you know, maybe we should not have a Suttering John segment. And then he just keeps doing wacky shit. It's well, hard to drop I, it. Stop talking about him because I find him very boring. 
But then because of the shit that he's saying about us specifically, people keep posting things in the subreddit. I'm like, well, I guess I got to talk about this and pull this clip and that clip. Because, yeah, I, I was ready to move on and talk about Opie some more or some other fun characters, but oh, well. Yeah, oh, didn't God. he, like, almost mistakenly call Opie Anthony at one point during their, yeah, their yeah, show together? And that Ooh. was a crazy show, though. It's like the he, number one mistake. <laughs> <laughs> He's so stupid. And then, <laughs> and then Opie said something, I don't know if he was trying to be funny or something about, you know, it sucked that he had to do Saturday John show and then John went after Opie after that. Oh, why, why are you trolling me? Why are you bashing me? It's Opie. <laughs> Jesus Christ, John. What is the end game here? Just have a sense of humor about yourself. Relax. Wow. You get to be pissed off at every single person who exists in the world. <laughs> You're not going to get anywhere with that. Really, like, he should be the one paying these trolls for hire. You know, the fact that people are just voluntarily working for him. He's got a lot of interns, it sounds like. So we're doing a new thing. My buddy uh, Andy started up where, you know, if you go on Cameo, you can get celebrities to say pretty much anything you want them yes, to Yes, I am on Cameo <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so for between 15 and 100 bucks, usually you can get a video of someone. So Andy's been going out and hiring people to talk shit about Stuttering John on <laughs> Cameo. We got uh, Fred the Elephant Boy and... Uh, He's gotten uh, William Hung and the guy who hosts I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. So that's kind of something that I think would be a lot of fun if we all start trolling John through other celebrities. That's really great. Do you <laughs> think that these celebrities know who he is? Well, John the, or, uh, Fred the Elephant Boy did. The other ones did not. Yeah. So Ooh, what it. a sick burn that William Hung's never heard of you. <laughs> yeah, William, William Hung's a little bit out of it, I think. I don't know what that guy is up to, but. Yeah. Wow. That astute. But no, it's fun. You get to have uh, celebrities talk about living with cockroaches and drinking 22 Coors Lights every day and being an alcoholic. It's, it, you know, I could have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I wonder if there's somebody you could get to dress up in a huge cockroach costume and be like, I miss you, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That should be Ryan Long's next YouTube video. Uh, we, oh my God. <laughs> He is so funny. He is on such a roll. Like I keep thinking like, how is he going to keep putting out a new great video every week? And he does it. It's every really time. impressive. I actually look forward to it on Monday mornings. It always pops up for me. I'm doing a show with Ryan Long. I should promote Ooh. this for talking about it. We're going to be down in Tampa doing a live show. Ryan's going to be there doing stand up, and I'm doing uh, a show with Dick Masterson from the Dick Show and also Mersh from Revenge of the Sis. And there's, uh, there's still tickets left, but it's selling out. So you go to uh, tampa.dick.show and you can find out what the venue is and, and get your tickets there. That's a smooth plug, Carl. I'm Smoothest excited plug of all time. Ryan. I'm excited to see him. I love his stand-up. He's great. Uh, yes. He's Have you ever great. met him? I, well, he was on our show, but I haven't met him in person. Yeah, he's very tall, like a bean pole. And uh, yeah, sweet guy. A tall drink of water, huh? He's a real. Oh, someone's got a crush. He's a real tall glass of soy milk. No, he's. <laughs> yeah, no. Do I have a crush on him? Uh, no, I would. No, I have a friend crush. I think I admire him. I I really respect him, like creatively. I do too. His uh, his partner Danny's going to be there too. I should mention the guy who did all the videos with him. So he's they're also- doing stand up, and you guys are doing a like a live podcast. Yes. Are you doing? Are you reviewing another podcast? Or are you doing something else? Um, I haven't worked out all the details yet, but I'm planning on bringing actually uh, video in and playing video and goofing on that. Ooh, wow, so interactive! Be, yeah, so it'll be a little different than who are these podcasts? We just listen to audio. We would actually goof on the way people look and their mannerisms, which will be fun. That's really cool. Yeah, any anyone trying to make a show happen, I. I have respect for, you know, uh, we were talking, I was just on the Dick show this past weekend, which comes out tomorrow. We were talking about it and this could be the last live show. I mean, once Biden's in office and we're shutting down the entire country, will there be live shows ever again? This yeah, right. He wants to do live show. He wants to do another four to six weeks. Everyone gets forced vaccines. The new, the new world order rolls out. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. I was just talking to uh, my buddy who works at the comedy club here, which has been shut down since whatever it was, September, when they just decided that comedy couldn't be a thing that happens anymore. And they were talking to government officials here in New York State, and the government officials admitted that it's just a political thing. Nobody wants to be the one who says, yeah, open up the comedy clubs, and then there's some type of super spreader event, 
And it's wow. like their fault because they said to do it. It's like, all right, why are we pretending that politicians are responsible for us getting sick or not? Why, yeah. why do that have a thing? That's really dangerous. It's really dangerous. It's like really shitty. And then we have like Cuomo uh, here being like, well, we're not going to let anybody have a vaccine um, until Biden's in office because we like the way he's going to give it out. We don't like the way that Trump would give it out. It's like, yeah. just let people get it out whenever. Remember like, when Cuomo was saying this isn't political, this isn't politics? Remember that at the beginning mm-hmm. of all of this? Look, at this isn't political. This is a disease. No, you can't have that thing that Trump's going to give you. You can only have this other thing. I don't care how many people die. Everyone is so obsessed with, with not making him look good. Correct. They're doing a good job of it, too. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. I was at a rally. I was at the Million MAGA March rally this past weekend in D.C. Really? Yeah. I just, like, really, really went on a, like, spur of the moment this is wait i can talk about this right because this is coming out yeah this is coming out on wednesday so it was really at this million maga march rally would you say um it was 1.5 million that was the really? last count that i got yeah wow Did yeah like tours there any antifa there were it was really interesting because like i've never been to the last time i was in dc was 10 years ago at the um the John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, like the rally to restore fear and or sanity. And it was like a sarcastic rally. And I was like, so young and stupid. And just didn't, you know, just like uh, we were focused on having funny signs, not, not anything else really like what's going on in the world. Yeah. So yeah, it was really amazing. So we walked in, you know, I think we started at Freedom Plaza and then we we're going to walk to the Supreme Court. And so right when you walk in, it's like people on both sides. And it's, it's, it's literally like just as I would have imagined Antifa would be. You know, the signs, they're yelling, the Ku Klux Klan rally is this way, da, da, da. They're like, they're like he's screaming at kids. They're saying like, fuck you to people's little kids that they're bringing. Like just the worst people, the most they love, nasty. Love they love peace so much. The na- they yeah. love peace and unity. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess it's out of here. The ones who are bringing our troops home from Syria. Let's get these assholes out of yeah. here. Yeah, their version of peace and unity, I guess, is just different. I'm not familiar with it. So sure. I, it's harder for me to process because they're just, it's full of hate. It's hate covered, hate covered peace. And uh, yeah, flinging insults, just like right here, screaming at all of us and like there's posters and stuff. But once you get through that, it's all just, um, and I never considered myself like a Trump supporter. I was very inspired by Brandon Straka's walk away movement. And I interviewed him on this podcast before. And um, so I was just like, yeah, let me go. Like, let me, I just wanted to go to cover it, you know? Because yeah. I just feel like for me to not go, I, I wouldn't be like walking the walk. And uh, once you get in, there's, you know, there's, you're surrounded, there's hundreds of thousands of people around you at all times. And at no point, even when we got like really tight and close to one another, nobody was like getting antsy, needing personal space. Like it was so chill. Everyone's so well behaved. There was, it was just like all love. It was all people who just like love the country, don't want to lose their freedoms, don't want to see us turn into communist China, don't, are for free speech, just don't want to like all of our rights to go away. Well, then you obviously hate old people. You do not want this to be a communist country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was finding that, that Antifa were picking on old people. They, that, that's their <laughs> tactic. They wait till there's, <laughs> they wait till there's just a couple people like loose by themselves and then they'll attack them. Which so was there like, were people wearing face masks at this room? I mean, you could if you wanted to, but we're outside. So it doesn't make, it has no, there's, if, if you're awesome. thinking with common sense, there's no reason to wear a face mask outside. So most people weren't. But okay. some people, I would say like maybe, I don't know, maybe 20, 25% of people you were. You bag a hat, Chrissy? No, I don't. I bought some Trump socks from this guy that was just like selling his wares. And I was like, I feel like I got to buy some buy some stuff and like you know, <laughs> spread the love i bought three pairs of trump socks i gave one to my fellow youtuber friend who's who came down from pennsylvania and she and i wouldn't have even thought of it if she was like are you going and i was like no it's gonna be dangerous and then like 12 hours later i was like fuck it we're going you know so that was really cool oh, and, uh, so do you have footage from this you're gonna be releasing anything yes i have a ton of footage yeah i i have two or three live streams on my youtube right now 
Okay. They're all, they're all about an hour long, but I got some really good interviews. Like I got an interview with this guy named Prometheus, who's like pro foreskin. And, um, he's just, he thinks that like, you know, he's really passionate about, about little boys keeping their foreskin. And he's like, it's horrible. And, and like the longer I listen to him talk, Chrissy, what's your stance on that? You know, I, I understand both sides. Like I understand. No, no, your personal preference. Oh, to look at one. I mean, I've had all kinds. I've had all kinds in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So that's what I'm asking you. What's what's your preference? I, I guess I prefer circumcised. Okay. But I won't turn away an uncircumcised one. Very good. It's all about who it's attached to, you know? Fair enough. I think, I think that's funny because that really should be the be all end all argument when people, and, and I'm circumcised, but when, when people talk about this, like, oh my gosh, you can't do that sort of thing. I'm like, well, well what do women prefer? Because <laughs> that's, that's what I want oh. to know. That's, that's kind of the thing that makes the most sense to me. And it's like, you're making a decision for your kid. And it's like, you don't even know if he's going to, if the kid's going to end up even liking women. So it's like, I get that it is like, oh wow, you're making like a big bodily decision for your kid and that he can't even like say yes or no. But at the same time, like, who, what like little boy is going to grow up and be like, you know what? I really want to be circumcised now. Let's do it when I'm 18. You know, you know that's what happened to Sam Roberts. What? Really? Sam Roberts was circumcised at the age of 18. He's told the story. It's ridiculous. It's, oh it seems my very God. unpleasant. That see. seems painful. Yeah. When you get that old, it seems very unpleasant. Hmm. Although yeah. it's unpleasant when you're young too. <laughs> you just don't remember it. It's tricky. It's like, sometimes I've seen really cute dogs that have their ears clipped. It's the same thing. You're like, ah. You know, okay, fair enough. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You were talking about the great interviews that you had. So besides, clipped. besides the guy who's obsessed with penises, yes, he was uh, obsessed with penises. Not- he looked <laughs> insane. Like you look at him, you're like, oh, that's a guy you'd see on the street. You'd never talk to them. And I was like, I gotta talk to this guy because he's like dirty. He's got like five. He's covered in signs that he did himself. And and I was like, you know, your I was like, your catchphrase should be no foreskin, no peace. And then he points to his sign, and it's literally he wrote, he like had the same idea. He already had it. And uh, yeah, he was really cool to talk to. He went on and on and on. And he, it's like almost like no one's interviewed him because he kept saying and another thing, you know. And he's talking about like he's really branching out all the topics he feels passionately. Like, oh, you gotta get sun and don't play video games and just like. Oh, so he, he kind of went off script a little bit. He went way off script. Stay on was, message here, buddy. We got a really cool. important message to stay on. And, um, and then there were, like, I had friends texting and messaging, text, texting and messaging me, like, on all social media and stuff, like, oh, be careful. We're seeing a lot of Antifa fights. And, but I just wasn't in that area. Like, me and Riss, the girl that I was with, we kind of, like, went down a different path. I think the people that went back out like the entrance those are the people that encountered antifa again but we went a different way and there was a guy in a windbreaker chasing us he was like older he's like i'm here to meet women and we were like ah, run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was cool though it was really cool um mike lindell the my pillow guy was a speaker sebastian gorka was a speaker and then i met and then on sunday was the walk away um rally which is specifically like brandon strack and he's like he's the best because he's like super gay dude and he's just like yeah i walked away from the democratic party I, they're, they're fucking crazy it's like they i don't support what they're into now and it's nice because a lot of us think like oh there's republicans and there's alt right you know what those people look like like crusty old men or just like proud boys like people don't even like it's like get to know a proud boy like actually like know what they're about but all, of course all we see is like mainstream media depictions of them so um so here we have like at this walk away movement like so diverse like every color of person every gender sexuality of person all there and uh, that's what's cool it's like a new face for this like new conservative movement i guess that's, that's wouldn't it be up. great if we could have more than two parties so you didn't have to pick republicans or democrats yeah they're all terrible wouldn't that be neat you know libertarians don't really have their shit together. <laughs> I know. We can't get our shit together. I don't understand why nobody ever says, well, uh, you know, I, I can't stand the Democratic Party anymore, so I guess I'm a Republican. Like, well, could you just be like a, a third thing? Can we add a third thing to this? Yeah. Like, no other country is like this. So stupid. But oh. that's what they do. That's what's like, it's like, oh, are you for us? Or are you against us? And that that's what creates the division. It's like, if we had a third party, 
we would come together. I think more, there'd be certainly less division and less like, oh, are you on the other side or not? And uh, that conservatives and Republicans aren't really that way. Like there's so much, there was so much love like both days at both of these rallies. Um, if there were haters, they, they would actually be <laughs> yeah. like, oh, we love you. God bless, you know? And it was really cool. Like dr- literally drowning out their cursing with people being like, have a good day. <laughs> So you don't think boarding up New York City was necessary before the election? You know, I, the Trump people were out there destroying the place afterwards? Oh, no. <laughs> I think they were, well, oh, you're trying to be funny. They were obviously, like, worried that Trump would win, and then people. Yeah, obviously. Uh, the left would write. Those yeah. people are, are going to tear shit up. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. wild. It's wild. But I was, like, really blown away because I, you know, I had my impressions of what, like, the MAGA movement was about. And, like, you know, you look at the stereotypes of the people and you're expecting one thing, but you get there. And, like, not only is it incredibly diverse, but it's, like, the smartest people. Everyone there is, like, smart and well-spoken. And you're like, holy shit. How can that be, Chrissy? I've been told by numerous people that if you vote for Trump, you're a racist. So how can uh, that possibly be? I guess maybe they were at a different rally because I didn't, I didn't, oh, they were, weird. like, I don't know, more very vocal uh, black men and women there than I think. It it was really interesting. I got a lot of cool interviews. So maybe I'll cut together something with all my different interviews. But yeah, it was really, really neat. And yeah, it changed my mind a lot about about, uh, the MAGA people. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Cool. I'm, I'm proud of you. You're getting out there. You're doing shit. I haven't left this fucking state in a year. Oh, I met um, Jack Posobiec. Do you know him? I don't. Who is that? I might him have him on a pod. He's just like a he's like he's like a big Twitter guy. So yeah, and my friend Ashley St. Clair was there. She's like a big personality. She's like a Twitter. You know, I hate saying that my reference for everything is oh, they're big on Twitter, but that's kind of where people go. Yeah. So it's the world today. It's, it's interesting that I, I was hearing, I can't remember where I was listening to this, but I was listening to a comedian talk about, actually, I think it was on Anthony Cumia's show. I was listening to a comedian talk about how you don't even want to get a TV deal anymore. Like if you end mm. up on Instagram or something, you're going to alienate all of your fans because you're just going to be a vanilla version of yourself. And you have way more potential to develop a podcast or a video series like what Ryan Long is doing or something like that. You're going to get way more fame and credibility and be able to tour and sell out clubs and everything more so than like getting a tv deal no one even watches tv anymore and who's even going to be appeal it, it's it's amazing how quickly this transition from analog to digital has happened it's really amazing it used just a couple years ago getting a late night spot as a comic was the end all be all it was like oh my god so i went on this the show drew and mike and i go on there every other week they're out of detroit and drew was fascinated by this kate willett person because he's like, how is this woman a comedian? Like, you can't be a woke comedian. There's no such thing as that. And he went and, and watched that whole video of her on Stephen Colbert. And he was just, he kept asking me questions while I was on the show. He's like, how does she get booked to be on Stephen Colbert? It doesn't even make any sense. Why are they booking her? She knows like, the right people, yeah. Go, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Being on Stephen Colbert, it, people aren't going to recognize you the next day. It's not like it used to be on a late night show. I don't think it springboarded her career in any way. I don't think people listen like, to Like, you might get... I don't know. You might get like a couple thousand more Twitter followers. It's possible. It's a credit. It's definitely yeah. a credit. So when you're trying to book yourself somewhere, oh, I was on Stephen Colbert. Okay, great. That's something that. Yeah, helps. clubs do like, you know, getting to say, all right, you're from something that most people will recognize. Sure. For sure. But so- you could also just build up your own Twitter following or your own social media following, have your own mailing lists, and then you fill the room that way. At the end of the day, they just care about filling the room, whether you do it from your credits or because people, you know, trust late night TV. I don't know where those people are anymore, but, um, <laughs> or you just have your own, your own fan base that you cultivate. And that is actually more satisfying because nobody can take that away from you. Nobody can cancel you, right. can cancel your, your fans. Yes, that was the thing when I was getting these threats from Heather that it was just, just laughable. Like, well, you can't take my podcast off the internet. I don't know what you think is going to happen here. Like someone's going to barge in there and like, <laughs> just take your microphone. <laughs> You'll see like a hand. No, I oh, that was not I almost spilled my coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thank God that we're not living in that, uh, in that area of cancel culture, which, you know, obviously exists for a lot of people, but for people like us, 
And uh, it seems like that's the way yeah. it's going if you want to. Your joke made me unhappy. Therefore, you don't get to do jokes anymore. You don't get to right. exist anymore because I didn't like this one thing you said. It's like the most selfish thing on the planet. Yeah. And it's worked enough times where people think, oh, well, this is, this is going to work for me. And then that they feel power with, hungry. Uh, with the show The Vanished, I think we've talked about this, but Marissa Jones, the host of The Vanished, got all of her Twitter followers and Facebook fans to try to get me fired. And but first she tried to get me taken off of uh, the web by going to Libsyn, our Whoa. hosting company. And thank God Libsyn was like, no, we're not gonna take this down. He, that's, he didn't do anything wrong. We, Good. Not, we don't take thank you, Libsyn. Down. Yes, thank God for Libsyn. They were really cool to me. They even called me and told me, yeah, this woman's trying to get your show. They hey, called I'm, you? Yeah, they called me. Hello, this is Libsyn. <laughs> Hi, it's, it's Billy Libsyn here. <laughs> Billy Libsyn. And by the way, at the time when they called me, I think I was paying them $17 a month. So it's not like I'm a big client of theirs that they need to keep happy or anything like that. So that was really cool. I don't really know cool. what I pay. God, whatever the normal rate is. It depends on how much bandwidth you use. I've had to increase it because, you know, that's my humble brag right there. Watch out. I'm paying more than 17 bucks a month to host my podcast. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> wow. The Lib I'm imagining just like a Libsyn family, like Lily Libsyn, Lindsay Libsyn. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Larry Libsyn. I started Laura. Libsyn, uh, Libsyn and Libsyn with my <laughs> brother. All right. All right. <laughs> so do you have any other juicy text this, messages you want to share? Part like Dave is going to tune in and be like, what are these fucking assholes talking about? Yeah, they can't What's even that? land this plane. <laughs> Uh, I think I think we've talked about it all. She sent me all sorts of different threads and conversations, and it just seems like John is really grasping at straws and super desperate at this point, which is crazy. I can't even imagine living. I, I would just get a job. If I was to a point where I was begging people to give me money so I could pay my mortgage or child support or going through these text messages back and forth where they're like mad at each other and then they make up and then they're mad again. I wouldn't even bother with that shit. I would just, I would just go get a job. Yeah. And like, what if like your whole, all your finances are based on a couple people? What if those people die, get sick, move, right? Like, I mean, that's just putting a lot of power in someone else's hands. Or what if Biden gets elected and no longer want to listen to you anymore because you have nothing to say? Like that's Yeah. Yeah. What if people don't want to listen to the Trump derangement hour anymore? Right. There's a lot of ways this could go wrong for you. So I, I'm not really quite sure what John's end game is. He's only 55 years old. <laughs> only <laughs> you might want to figure out something to do for the next 10 years i don't know we'll yikes see. we'll see what happens we'll see what happens you know and maybe another podcast will come along and uh poke the beehive and he'll have something to talk about then I well chrissy know. thank you for having me on the show again this was great carl it's We're always so good to you. see you um what kind of uh any any shows coming up other than the one you mentioned or i mean yeah. any, any podcast reviews coming up that you're excited for or where well, should people tune in i actually wanted to point out so yeah you can go to whoarethese.com or find who are these podcasts anywhere that you listen to podcasts but i also wanted to point out that i do a show with vinnie paulino who you've met before uh, Vinny and I do a show called The Creep Off, and we record every single Monday. It's kind of a fun format that we have. We have a theme. So this, the one we recorded today was Creepiest Trucker. And Ooh. so we just have to do the research and find out who we think is the creepiest truck driver. And then we come in and we make our case for who's the creepiest truck driver. And then the people go and vote on our website for who they think is brought the, the creepiest creep that week. And then... The next week we come on and say who won, we keep a running tally. Once somebody gets to five wins, the other person has to spin a wheel of consequences. Wow. So what happens is the listeners vote, and when you lose, you have to do these ridiculous things. Uh, like one of the things that Vinny had to do, because he lost recently, was he had to do 12-hour live stream listening to all these Patrick Michaels, stuttering John and Opie podcasts. Ugh. And he was just on YouTube for 12 hours straight and people are chatting with him and he just had to sit there in the studio and listen to it. I'm doing a thing where I have to recreate, there's this uh, child molester named Nick Bate who sang a bunch of songs on the internet. So I'm recreating all of those songs for like a oh cover album that, uh, because I lost, so that's my consequence. So it's kind of fun, it's interactive with the audience and uh, it's a good time, thecreepoff.com. 
Uh, so, so the punishments are creep related that you have to do something creepy as the, punishment. Yeah, the punishments are all over the place, but typically they add content to the show. Like <laughs> okay, one, that's one good, of that's the punishments good. is, and we haven't spun this one yet, thank God, but there's the seven second porn challenge. What you have to do is you have to stand in a crowded area, uh, a bus station, a mall, a supermarket, and watch porn on your phone for seven seconds with the volume all the way up. Oh my God. And so the other person could, could film that happening. So it's, it all leads to more content for the show. Do people, does your screen have to be visible or yeah. could you just be like, oh my God. <laughs> I know, I'm terrified of that one. I really do not want to get that one. There's another one, this guy, uh, Patrick Michael, who we make fun of, he did a, uh, this stand-up routine that is terrible. It's the worst stand-up you've ever heard in your life. And so if you spin this one kind of- Does he lift his shirt off? It's not the worst you've ever seen in your life. It's up there. <laughs> it's not as bad as Dabbling John. But this guy, Patrick Michael, he, he, we went up on stage and read off these like note cards and told these really hack jokes that nobody laughed at. And one of the consequences is we have to go to an open mic and redo his entire routine. And we can't yeah. say that it's for a show or that, you know, I actually made uh, one of the other ones. I, I had uh, Vinny opened up for, uh, it wasn't Tammy Pescatelli, but someone who came to Rochester recently and did an outdoor show, like a drive-in stand-up show. Vinny had to open up for them wearing a Stuttering John t-shirt. Oh my God. And he couldn't, he couldn't make a mention to it. He couldn't say why he was wearing it. He just had to stand in front of all of these people wearing it. So it's, it's fun stuff like that. There's also Stuttering John face masks available, so get yes. you now. <laughs> Could you imagine someone wearing that? <laughs> I kind of want one. <laughs> <laughs> you should have worn it at that uh, MAGA rally. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be too much free advertising for him. Yes, agreed. Oh, my God. Well, Carl, this was wonderful. Um, where can people follow you on social media? At who are these pod on Twitter, but if you go to our website, there's links to our Discord, our Patreon, our subreddit. We have this new thing called Supercast. If you don't like Patreon and you want to get the bonus episodes and all the stuff that we put out behind the paywall, you can go to our Supercast and it's the same as Patreon, but you don't have to give money to that company. So if you go to our website, you can find links to all those things. And I wonder if there's a link to contribute to your mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> there is not. I, I pay my mortgage without oh. begging people for money. Well, then you haven't made it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. All right, girl. This was great. Love you. Bye. <laughs> See ya.